Hello there. Welcome to another edition where we look at some of the starter tapes and discs that were given away with the old 8-bit machines. Um, in this case, it's the old uh, Amstrad CPC 128. So um, these tapes and discs were basically just demonstrations of what the machines could do. Um, they had a bit of an obsession at the time. Um, with demonstrating that not only could they play games on the machines, but they were business machines, they were educational machines, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they were trying to sell them to the adult market, basically, as well. Um, so, as you can see, uh, this is just a, de a graphic demonstration showing the Amstrad's capabilities. Um, this differs from the welcome tape for the 464 because there's actually a fill command. So the letters in this instance were filled in in different colours. That doesn't happen on the earlier version of the software, which was written by Amsoft in 1984 and added to for this um, edition of the machine. I just want to give a thank you to uh, Patrick Furlong as well for recording this for me. Always appreciated. So here's another pattern, basically, it's just um, showing you the different um, drawings that it can make using the line functions, and there's a little colour cycle, just showing that you can colour through the different palettes. So that would have been mode one. I think this is mode one as well, and this is just demonstrating the circle command and the line draw command as well, look. So I used to use Amstrad's uh, back in the day because I used to develop software, I used to make games for them. Um, I never actually owned my own, but I, I do remember using them quite often, just for um, Art Studio more than anything. Um, so I've never actually seen this starter tape before. It's called Welcome, by the way. This bit goes on for quite a while. It's written in basic, I think, which is why it's quite slow. So it's quite nice how, unlike the Spectrum, which is the machine I had, um, you can see that the, the different colours can overlap each other without causing any um, attribute problems. So that was a major advantage, obviously, for the Amstrad. Um, one of the major disadvantages was that, um, although it had better graphics and better sound than um, the, the Spectrum, which was another Z80-based machine, um, it had the same processor. So. Um, you could do a lot more with it, but a lot slower because the you, you're still using the same processor, basically. It reminds me of those um, old 70s string paintings or drawings that uh, people used to make. Do you remember those with the little nails in a board and they used to just wrap a different coloured string around them for some reason. I can't remember what it's called now, that technique. It was all the rage in about 1974. So this is another demonstration. So um, like I said before, unlike the 464, this, this machine's actually got a fill command. So you can get solid shapes. This is just a demonstration of random circles by the look of it. Random triangles this time. Squares or oblongs? No, nope, definitely squares. Star shapes. So this looks like it's screen mode 2 actually, which is a more blocky. You had 16 colours in this mode, uh, but the screen resolution um, was a lot blockier to make up for the fact that uh, the, you know, the screen memory would have been too big otherwise uh, to fit it to memory properly. So if you look at the, the edges on the, the shapes, you can see they're quite blocky there. That's um, that's how you can really see it. It's still blocky in uh, the other uh, screen modes, but it's more blocky than that one. Here's the sound.
Andy. Here we go. Um, I think there were some actual published um, business applications. So this is a spreadsheet, and, and this is just a mock-up, obviously, just showing the sort of thing that you can do on a spreadsheet. Um, this would have been new to a lot of people back then because uh, more than likely if you'd got an Amstrad or a Spectrum or a Commodore 64 or whatever for Christmas, it was more than likely the first computer you were ever, you'd ever used ever before. Um, I mean, some people took computer studies and um, we, uh, we used to have a BBC Model B in those classes. But other than that, this would have been, you know, most people's first um, contact with a computer. So uh, it's, it looks really primitive now and obvious, but it's, uh, it, it was quite interesting at the time. So again, these are just mock-ups of uh, things you could use. And again, it's mainly to uh, persuade the adults that uh, you can you can use them for your things as well as the kids using them for their things. You know, you know, it's a sales gimmick really. Um, here's a word processor. And what it's doing there is it's got a bunch of text and it's just basically um, justifying it as it says at the top. So that's sort of spacing it out so that it's in columns properly, like you would see in a newspaper. And if it's anything like the the welcome tape on the 464, next up it's going to, yeah, it's going to check for different words and, and uh, swap them over. And then tediously go back and try to space out the the words again. Um, so this one's, um, <laughs> it looks like uh, it's going to just show us a few random arcade games. So these are in the 16 colour mode, which is mode 2 I believe. Most games though are actually um, written in uh, mode 1, which was, I, I keep going on about the Spectrum, I'm sorry, but it, uh, it was similar to the Spectrum, and what people normally did was they'd, um, they'd develop a game on the Spectrum, which is the closest screen resolution to the, the mode 1 on the uh, Amstrad, and then just port it over to the Amstrad using the same code. There's slight differences in the code for keyboard and that sort of thing. Um, but so what we would do is we would use the Spectrum graphics and just add two more colours just to take advantage of those uh, extra things that you have on the Amstrad there. And there it goes. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.